welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about my hospital, my birth story. I know I, the video I just posted was my birth vlog. This is going to be like my story and how I felt about it. Um, so he's actually back there. I don't know if I can see him. Um, so it was 6.30 in the morning whenever we got to the hospital. I didn't sleep at all. Um, I haven't been sleeping very well for that past week because I was so big and uncomfortable. Um, I wanted to get there early. Um, we were supposed to get there at 6.30, I believe. And we had to wait in the waiting room. Yeah, so we took all of our stuff in because we thought it was going to be something quick. And we were out in the waiting room for like half an hour just waiting and sitting. And I was drinking my water at that time. Um, right as we got, right as I signed the papers and everything, we had to wait for a while. And then they finally called my name. And whenever they called my name, I could only go in there. Edward wasn't allowed in there for some reason. Yeah, Edward wasn't allowed in there for some reason. They're asking me questions about like who's the father they hooked me up um my I so they hooked me up to my IV and she poked me twice and boy that hurt so bad and that nurse was so good I loved that nurse I waited in there for like 20 minutes and then Edward finally was able to come in there he brought all of our stuff and I was really cold so we sat in there and we were waiting for like half an hour. Um, well, we got in my room at 7.30. Sorry, I have my notes. We got in my room at 7.30. And they checked me and I was dilated to a 2. Um, and so we sat there for a long time by ourselves. Um, they started my induction, I guess that's what it's, what is it called? I think it's induction. Um, when they have the little pill and they stick it up in you to get you started at, uh, 1020. And we were just going and my parents got there, I think at 12. Um, yeah, um, at like 12. Um. And we were just chilling in there. I wasn't really having any any pain or anything. Um, it wasn't even like period cramps yet. So my parents came and I was just chilling in the bed. And right as I was going to get up to go to the bathroom, um, the nurse came in and said, your doctor's going to be in here in a second. And I said, okay. So I decided to wait. And my doctor came in and he asked how I was doing and I said, good. He said, okay, we're working your water right now. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I looked away, grabbed a little thingy. I don't even know what he used. But I'm so glad, I've been stretching this whole time. I'm so glad that they didn't tell me sooner because then I would have reacted and um, probably gotten scared and like psyched myself out or whatever. But since it was right on the spot, it was still a little scary, but it was like, bam, bam, done. They broke my water. And I told them that I had to pee. Um, so then they gave me that little bucket thingy and I had my mom, Edward, my sister, my dad. They were all sitting on the side of the room and right as they were doing like giving me my bedpan or whatever, putting it under me, my dad walked out. So every time, you know, it showed anything inappropriate, my dad walked out. And Edward was just sitting there staring at me. And they're like, are you going? And I was like, I can't go if he's staring at me. It's like, don't look at, it's all embarrassing. Like. I mean, I just have to pee, laying in bed, uncomfortable. Yeah. So, then that happened. Then they came in again at uh, 12.30 to check me. And I was still at a 2. I was 35 effaced. It wasn't bad. Whenever they check me, I mean, yeah, it kind of hurts. It's uncomfortable. So, we're just waiting. At that time, I started filling it. And I asked when I should get the epidural because I wanted to get it before I had him. I didn't want to wait too long because, it, you know, if you wait too long, you can't get it. Well, apparently that's not a thing anymore. You can get it anytime, right before you have the baby, anytime. It doesn't matter. 
but you just have to not move. That's the problem. And I didn't want to be in too much pain to where I would twitch and, and move around. At 225 is when I got the epidural. Um, oh my goodness. And after I got the epidural, um, they gave me a catheter. They checked me, and I was still at a 2, um, but I was at 75 a face. So, me thinning out was good, but me dilating was taking a while. Um, so then they gave me a, a catheter, which by that time, you know, you don't feel anything because I got the epidural. The epidural didn't hurt at all. Honestly, like everybody's like, oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. I, nope, I was not afraid. It did not hurt. I had these good, um, I had this male nurse and he was so sweet and then the guy who gave me the epidural was a man. Um, and they're all joking saying that I have to name him after one of them because they gave me the epidural. Um, but it was super not, they were super nice. I was like, um, super comfortable with them. You know, some people aren't really comfortable like with male nurses, I guess. Um, but that's the only time I had, um, male nurses. My doctor's a a man so I mean at that point in time when you're giving birth you don't really care who's looking as long as you push the baby out but anyways um yeah they gave me the catheter they came back in at um 3 30 and I was at uh three centimeters and still 75 effaced um so then it was basically the waiting game my doctor came in and told me that I did not need any more of the little pill yeah, they told me I didn't need it because my body was doing a very good job of doing it itself, which was great. Um, and they said they were surprised because it was my first child and how my body was so like into it. But I mean, we're made for it, so I don't know why they were so surprised. Um, but yeah, at 5.45, they came in and checked me and I was 5 centimeters dilated which it feels like forever. I mean, I was there all day. Oh, and the best part about it, I'm all over the place, even though I wrote it down. I couldn't have water. And I was so thirsty because I got there at six o'clock. I didn't eat breakfast. I mean, I tried to. I hardly ate anything. I couldn't drink any water, so they gave me some ice, chip, ice chips, and that was like a lifesaver. Um, but anyways, yeah. So when they came in and checked me at 545, I was 5 centimeters dilated and I was 90 of face. So, I was doing really good at that time. Um, honestly, I was so far away, I can't really remember how I was feeling other than uncomfortable. Um, just uncomfortable as in, you know, I couldn't feel any pain or I couldn't really move my legs or anything. I was just like, I'm ready. I'm ready to have him. I'm tired, I'm hungry, let's go. And my body was like, nope, not yet. Um, yeah, and since I couldn't feel anything, um, the closer I was getting to having him, the more I was able to feel. Like I could move my legs and I could move my toes and I could feel my leg whenever I touch it um, and stuff like that. So I told my nurse and my nurse came in and she gave me a button and a button to push. So every like 30 minutes or 15 minutes, I don't know, I was able to push the button, push the button. And I could feel it because it was super cold, like coming into my body. Um, but I pushed it constantly. Only because um, one of the nurses said she thinks it's because my epidural was done wrong. But right as he did it, it was like real quick. Um, but some people are, um, I guess, more tolerant to it. I don't know the right word but I just had to keep pushing the button the whole time and I do not deal with pain well I do have tattoos um yeah but I'm like a big baby when it happens I mean I act all cool when it's like happening but in my head I'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god don't move don't move it hurts so bad <laughs> but anyways um at 7 45 they checked me and I was eight um meters dilated and a hundred a face so we're just waiting for my dilation at that point um my dad and my mom I remember going for a walk because they've been there for hours just sitting there I know my dad fell asleep once I think Edward fell asleep we're just trying to fall asleep my mom and my sister and I were just talking like the whole time 
Um, my sister actually had her baby in May, and I'm having mine in I was having him in September. So she like recently just went through this, so I really wanted her there, and it was her second child. So I wanted her there to like calm me down, tell me what was happening, keep track of everything, which was really good. Um, so yeah, then they came back in at 8.20 to check me, and I was 9. I was at a 9, um, and I was 100 a face, so they turned me on my side and gave me the peanut. And they said, if you feel any pressure, tell us, and we'll go get your doctor. And I said, okay. So I'm laying there, and I feel him. I feel him down here. I feel like his head's coming out. Um, I just feel him really low. And I told the nurse, and the nurse is like, okay, well, um, she checked me. She's like, no, you're still good. I was like, okay. I mean, I'm at a nine. Like, any minute now, I can be a ten, and my doctor wasn't even there. And she's like, okay, well, we'll call your doctor. So I had to tell her like four times for her to actually call my doctor. So then she called my doctor, and she's like, oh, he's like 20 minutes away. He's 20 minutes away? Are you kidding me? I told you like 20 minutes ago how I felt about it and I felt like he's coming out. So I wanted the peanut gone because I felt like he was already coming out. Well, at that point, oh, the baby's heart rate was dropping. Like that was scary. Every time they would check me after, his heart rate would go down. And it was super scary because the nurses were freaking out. So then put, they would put me on the side. And so then my nurse, I think, might have been in training or something because she had to have, it like, a shadow. Um, so she went and she called that other nurse to come in. And they checked me again, and his heart rate was going down. My doctor gets there, and he comes in, like, 9, 15 maybe? He gets there, and they roll me on my back. Whenever they first found out that his heart rate was going down, they put me on my side, and they gave me some oxygen. And to breathe slowly and slowly and slowly. So I was kind of freaking out about it because, you know, I didn't want to have to um, have a C-section. And so, yeah. So when my doctor came in, I was on, I had oxygen. And he looks down and he checks me. He's like, you're at a 10. And the heart rate started going down. So he's like, yelled at the nurses, come on, let's go. We're doing it now. And that scared me. Um, because he's like, we're doing it now. And, you know, the, if a doctor's saying, like, something's wrong or he, in his tone, you know, he wasn't his happy, cheerful self, then something's happening. Are you watching your show? Um, so, yeah. So, they put me in the stirrups, gave me the oxygen. I was looking up and, um, what's wrong? You don't want to play no more? Don't play. Yeah, look, you want to eat Mama's necklace? Well, it's your necklace that Mama wears. You want to eat? <sighs> so, yeah, um, I was pushing, and they were telling me to do it quick, which was scary because he, apparently his heart rate was dropping. This whole time I was trying to push, they were trying to get him out. I couldn't breathe because I was pushing, and they were telling me to and then push again and I think I was just exhausted. I started blacking out as I was pushing. I think it's because I kind of like the lack of oxygen I was really taking in to push. Yeah, I know he was telling me to push hard and Edward was watching the whole thing. I had my eyes closed. In the beginning I was looking at Edward and Edward was making like a face like that. So I couldn't stare at him anymore because he was freaking me out. Um, but yeah, so I had my eyes closed the whole time until he told me to open my eyes and look down. And there he was. Chandler was right there. As I was looking down, I see his head coming out or half his body. It was so weird seeing him. Um, everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It was, I mean, it was, but at that point in time, it was super strange. Obviously, I've never had a child before, so seeing him come out of me was weird and like it was super hard to push i'm going back again it was super hard to push because i had the oxygen mask on it was like pulling at my face and then after i pushed him out my doctor was sewing i didn't know how much he sewed i asked him if i ripped and he said yes i honestly thought he cut me but he i ripped in two places yeah so after i had him I think honestly it was a little traumatic like right after I had him. Me thinking about having another baby was like totally off the table in my head. 
but you know the longer time goes like the more it fades away like the scare being scared and the feeling of it and after I had him we were in the hospital and after I had him I had him I'm oh, sorry I had him at 9 55 p.m. he was 24 ounces at 21 21 and 3 inches he was having a hard time latching he didn't really understand it and you know like the nurses grab his face and they like shove it on you and I'm like oh well, I'm just afraid he's not like breathing and they're like well if he can't breathe he'll pull his head off I was gonna pull his head off if you're shoving him on my chest you know like it was super weird and everybody left they shook my hand you know every, everything was good it was me Edward my older sister um, my mom and dad left they were tired which is fine I honestly thought my mom was gonna stay but she didn't it was fine I couldn't really move though I was tired but I couldn't really move at all without being in pain um, we stayed in that room until I think three o'clock in the morning it was super late I was trying to get some sleep Edward had Chandler well anyway it was like 12 it was like 12 and Edward was holding him well we changed nurses everybody left we got a new nurse and whenever we got the new nurse she seemed like she was nice but she wasn't I was I'm 23 Edward's 26 she was seeming nice but she was like really degrading how old we are I've been around kids since I was a kid uh, I was in church my whole life I always babysat my mom was the children's director when we were little we always watched babies kids we had nieces nephews we were around kids changing diapers babysitting our whole lives basically basically so like us taking care of a newborn isn't really I mean yes that's new but it's not like we were completely dumb or didn't know anything by the time she asked if we took I okay I'm the type of person that I know I know that I'm supposed to feed my baby when he cries I know I'm supposed to check him to change him whenever he cries or if I see a blue line you know what I mean and she I asked her since he's a newborn I don't know I don't want to mess up um so I asked her how many times I said do I change the diaper if he pees in it once like it right as I see a blue line do I change him or do I wait till it's full and she goes you didn't take a class and I said no ma'am and she's like y'all didn't take any kind of classes and I said no and she's like how old are you and I was like excuse me she's like y'all should have taken a class and I, I was taken aback by that, you know, because she's my nurse. She's supposed to be, you know, supportive, even if I am young. But I'm not that young. You know, I'm 23 years old. I was just asking a question. And um, I didn't know if I should change him right away or not. You know, I didn't want to waste a lot of diapers. Or I didn't want, you know, I just didn't know. So I was asking questions, which I always thought was supposed to be good. You know, asking questions because... If you don't ask you don't know and every time I asked her a question she would say something about how I'm young and how like basically I was naive to it and I had her for that night till I think 10 in the morning and so I didn't ask her any questions I didn't tell her anything I said everything was great I said all this stuff was great because of all her negativity and it was pissing me off because when I was trying to sleep and we were still in our first room um we stayed in that room till I think 3 in the morning it was like 12 and I was going to sleep and Edward was holding Chandler patting him patting him he finally fell asleep so then Edward put him down and right as Edward put him down he started screaming which is normal he's a newborn he started screaming and Edward went to the bathroom and when he came out I couldn't move because of the pain I was in because I did rip in two places and my girls wearing off and I couldn't move so the baby had to cry until Edward you know went to the bathroom and came out he wasn't in there long he washed his hands he came back to hold the baby and right as he opened the bathroom door that nurse comes running in she grabs him 
and starts like petting the crap out of him. And she's like, he's a newborn, he can't soothe himself. So y'all either are going to have to hold him or give him a bottle. Because he's been screaming this whole time and I can't handle it. Excuse me? And I said, um, no, he hasn't. Edward had him down. I mean, he was just asleep. He's just started crying. And she's just holding him, patting the crap out of him all hard. And, oh my gosh. It was just, no, I was so pissed. So we gave him a bottle because he wasn't latching very well. And um, he would scream and fight and fight. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to give him a bottle. I want, you know, I wanted him to just be breastfed. Even though, <sighs> like at that point, we did give him a bottle that first night or day type thing. We did give him the formula that they provide just because he wasn't latching very well. And we were both very exhausted. But I couldn't do anything about it. He wasn't latching. And... Then they moved us to our actual room we stay in to where we could have visitors and stuff. And when we moved in there, we got a new nurse and she was amazing. She gave us little tips and tricks every time she came in about breastfeeding and getting him to latch. Even though she wasn't the, um, the I guess, breastfeeding consultant. I don't know what you would call it. Um, I can't remember the word. But she was amazing. She listened to us whenever we asked her questions. No question was dumb. She was super great. And we had her basically the whole time we were there. We were there for three days because he was jaundiced. And apparently it's like genetic because my twin and I, we were both jaundiced and both of her babies were jaundiced. So he was jaundiced, but not, not bad enough to where he had to go under the light. But he did have a hematoma and he actually still has it. I don't know if you can tell. Let's see. It's right here. Ooh. It did calcify, which is scary. But anyways, I'm gonna wait to get home. Hey okay. guys, so I'm just over here editing video and I realized that it just randomly cut off on me. I didn't make an outro. So here's my outro. Uh, so we got to the house and it was great. I mean, it was better than being at the hospital, like being told what to do and I'm not getting a lot of sleep because the nurses were going in and out. But yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye.